We are a family of six who call the ocean our home. We feel incredibly blessed to be doing this life together as a young family, embracing the ups and downs of what is a life at sea. This is our floating home, Happy Days, and you are invited to follow along as we share this incredible adventure. Have a laugh and be inspired to pursue a life less ordinary. Click the subscribe button to keep up to date as we see where this journey takes us. In the last episode, we sailed back through the shallow Hog Key Cut and spent some time in Georgetown with new friends. In this episode, it's time to say goodbye and leave the beautiful Bahamas. We refuel and check out in Great Inagua, then set sail towards Panama through the Windward Passage. Let's do this! Let's roll. It's exciting. There's always like, I always, like butterflies for me is how I'd explain yeah. it. There's comfort when you know a place, you know people, yeah. but there's adventure in going Actually, to where you don't know. This time we're going to a place we know that we like and we know what's there and stuff. It's true. Yeah, yeah. I think the tricky part this time is saying goodbye to Tim, different Tim's like, get me to block us! Well, this is what going east of the caravan looks like when the trade winds are blowing. Main sail up, one engine on. And uh, yeah, you just punch into it. Let's uh, hope we don't have to do it too much. Today should just be just over 20 miles. Oh, 25 miles, I should say. Sort of positioning ourselves to get around the top of Long Island and then we can take easterly tomorrow to the south. So try and make it comfortable, we'll get there before dark, go for a swim. Yeah, that'd be nice. We'll go from there. And if there's still winds, pipes. Oh, yeah. That was a big thing. We get there early enough. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And so will I. Yeah. Amazing! <laughs> I feel a little bit dizzy because the kids said a challenge that we had to run our age that many laps around the boat. <laughs> but after 39 laps around the boat, I'm feeling a little bit dizzy. <laughs> so I've decided to come up here with a fizzy water and watch the moon for a minute and <laughs> chill out until I feel not so queasy. Well, the other guys make some pizza. Yeah, they're starting the pizza. I'll go down and help them soon. We're in a bit of a roadstead anchorage, so uh, it's a wee bit wobbly, but it's stunning. Look like it's just sandy goodness. It's incredible. Look at that. So we've got pizza happening on board at the moment. Definitely helping us go south. Pip's doing, oh, you look lovely. Pineapple, oh, you want? Oh, nice. And Archie's on dishes Get today. <laughs> we are planning to transit the canal again uh, and head to the Pacific. Yes. Archie has had a bit of tooth pain. We weren't sure what's going on there, but we tried to find a dentist in Georgetown and we were told that it's going to be two weeks before there's a dentist visiting the island. So he's been in excruciating pain. He's actually got an infection. Waking up at night and everything and we've just discovered he's got an infection. We got some antibiotics and I've been messaging with a, a dentist friend and she said, look, antibiotics and pain relief should last. Get him to a dentist when you can so that's going to be our first stop when we get to panama it'll be like check into the country and then go find a dentist <laughs> but he's managing okay um the antibiotics are starting to work the infection's slowly um subsiding but poor wee guy he's, he's not been he's, he's not he's been, been up, up and down face. you're on up at the moment at but. the moment, yeah, the medicine's working right now. Are you going to be able to eat, are you gonna be able to eat pizza or do I need to blend it? I'm too hungry. <laughs> figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the most pancakes. Yeah. So we're going to... Did you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Archie, you know. bit too windy for you. I prefer 13, 14. Ideal sailing conditions. Yes. Only ideal sailing conditions for Pippi, please. <laughs> How would you describe today's conditions? Very lumpy and a tight haul. Yeah. Sporty. Sporty. Yes, that's right. Good. It's, um, yeah, tighter than, than we thought it would be. So we've had a couple of reefs in. 
since before sunup. We had thought we might have got about 90 miles in for the day. The forecast was sort of 13, 14 knots, and we've had more like, oh, 15 to yeah, 15 to 20. Uh, and we've had it at about 30 degrees, which is what we've got right now. So we're seeing 20 plus across the deck most of the time. So a short period, a bit uncomfortable. So we are going to change our plan and we can't quite get the angle or the wind isn't allowing us to get to our initial destination. So we will go to plan B. Yeah. And we should be there just after lunch. Uh, and we'll go from there. to lovely blue water and a wee bit of down sailing as we're downwind sailing as we come into the anchorage. Yeah. Passage planning? Yeah. We're yeah. just we're just learning from friends that have just done the passage. Thank you, Bedouin. And um trying to figure out what route we'll take. I think we what we were planning would be similar to what they were planning, but we're just trying to educate ourselves around the currents because that's what they hit which they weren't um, prepared for. They also saw some pretty decent seas, so we're trying to mentally prepare ourselves for that, but believe that our forecast is is lighter than what they left on, so yeah, that's where we're at. <laughs> Hello, g'day mate. Where are we off to? Well, I was going to Great Namwa to check out of Bahamas and then to possibly Panama or Jamaica, either one. We'll see what happens with the forecast. Yeah. Do you have anything else to tell me? We've been playing with Legos, I just played with some cars, watched the movie, and played with more Legos. Um, yeah, it's been one of those sort of days, huh? Where it's just keep yourself busy, find a comfy spot. We haven't had the best conditions, but we're almost like sucking up these mediocre conditions so that we can get good conditions for the passage to Panama because it's a longer passage, there's more risk of bad conditions and we'll see how we go. These guys just got up. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> We've been sailing very, very well since about 11, 11.30 last night. We'll be there about 9 30 10 o'clock so that we can check out of the country and then we'll carry on yeah. we've got to have one last swim in the bahamas right yeah <laughs> so we'll get there soon and check out great inagua before we leave the bahamas yeah <laughs> bells has just brought us into great inagua drop the anchor we're gonna get this main down, teed up immigration, a lovely chap there. Just overnighted from Long Island. In true Bahamas form, we've got crystal clear water. We're gonna tip some jerry jugs because we used a wee bit of diesel on the way here. I'd just like to go to sea full. Anyway, we've got to get this done. Dad's filling up the engine with the jerrys so then we can fill them up again. Um, we've we'll organized a bloke called Skinny. I think he's got a diesel <laughs> truck. And he takes cash, and we've got a wee bit of cash left. So we'll put some more diesel on board to be sure to be sure, you know? Yep. Oh, we're done. <laughs> There's a dinghy. And this is as far as we got. Yep. A lovely immigration officer. All right, so uh, five to ten minute walk to the ATM to get some more cash for fuel. Yeah, that's a win. Yeah, that's a win. Well, let's hope it's got cash in it. Let's just say there was an extra fee we were unaware of, so our diesel cash reserves got diluted. And we didn't have the right departure cards or something we were supposed to have. But that wasn't she too much didn't issue. seem to worry too much about that. Anyway. It's cool. <laughs> Just getting some fuel. How you top up here in Great Inagua with Skinny, the local diesel truck driver. And there's happy days. Last little land job before we push off. We've um, just walked into town. It's a public holiday, so there's not much open. 
Well, there was a little lady and she, uh, she had a fresh produce shop open. So we, we ducked in there to see what she had. Got some fairly sad looking uh, capsicums and uh, cabbage. She didn't have change for our $10. So she's like, what else do you want to take? So we took four limes. That was our change. <laughs> but it's all part of it. We love it. What do you reckon? Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> oh well. A few extra bits to get on the boat. Yeah. And then we're off. That's a wrap. Thank you Last swim. Us. In the Bahamas and we're making a move. Sad to leave those beautiful colours. I'm sure we'll find more. <laughs> jobs that we intend to get done before we leave that now we do while we're leaving. The cool thing <laughs> about these outboards is you don't have to put earmuffs on them and flush them. There's like this little little bit that you can just attach a hose to and then it'll flush the outboard so nice. yeah, we're away. there we go. It's flushing the outboard while underway. Because we're going to be five, six days at, at sea. Normally we don't ever flush it, that's because we use it every day. So the salt water doesn't have the ability to kind of sit there and corrode. That's our theory. From Uncle Steve, oyster yeah. farmer from North Island, New Zealand. Yeah. He was like, oh mate, when we were working the oyster barges, we never flushed the engines. We were using them every day. And I was yeah. like, huh, never thought about that. Same but if theory it's gonna with the sit, If it's going to sit for five days, best to Give it flush, a flush it, yeah. We just made, we've got 900 litres of water on board, happy to, of fresh water, happy to um, invest a, a wee bit. But we will go skinner on our showers at sea, because if I don't have to, or if we don't have to make water while at sea, that's just one less thing. And the lighter we get, the faster we go. <laughs> Who's going to be the stinky ones? <laughs> <laughs> For this sort of passage, five or six days, not a problem. When, when we do longer ones, you got to make water at sea. And I guess that's the mentality that we've got, like this boat, we're still dialing in for longer passages and we are looking at doing the Pacific crossing, which is um, Panama to French Polynesia uh, in a couple of months. So we're, we're really trying to get our mentality right and pretend that we're, that this passage is like a shakedown for yeah. that passage. So just dialing in all of our routines and at sea, and, and on that, there's two, two, two like things, that. two things. One is battery capacity, not stoked on it. We have 800 amp hours of gels and we've never plugged them in because we're always on the move and we don't subscribe to marinas. I think our state of charge was out. That's like your percentage of, of charge when we were up north. And I think we didn't give them enough charge and we've actually, I think it's calcified, that's not the right word, but we've we've ultimately taken the reduced top off. Reduced their ability. Yeah, reduced their capacity. Yeah, yeah, capacity. And so we're running a freezer on this boat, which we never used to. And anyway, so lithium is probably the arch there and, there's, and a solar arch up here, and I think that'll take care of it. But at the moment, we'll have to run the generator or, or an engine every day, even when we're sailing, to keep up with our consumption. And I don't like that at all. Yeah. It takes away from sailing 100%. Yeah. Maybe down from close to the equator where the days are longer, it'll work. On our old vessel, we had a, a prop that always spun and it created power through a, a sh an alternator on the shaft. It was amazing. So at night time, you were neutral. Here, we don't have enough solar during the day if the sun's out to make up for the nighttime usage. So that's our current challenge. That's our current challenge. That, and we learned that we need an anti siphon break. On both, our on both of our engines. So at the moment, and you'll laugh, but I've closed both seacocks off and I've taped the exhaust. Yeah, show us. I have covered that because we're anticipating some following seas. And we had an issue with our starboard engine and we couldn't quite dial in what it was. It didn't start like it normally always does. We got it started and the only thing I can come up with is a hydrolock. So that could be coming up through the intake, the raw water intake, past the impeller and that way, or it could be coming through the exhaust. So we've shut the intakes, taped the exhaust, uh, and yeah, that means that every time we run the engine, I've got to go and un undo the seacock and take the tape off. But when we get to Panama, anti-siphons them. They're like a hundred and something dollars each, and it's like... something that we can install ourselves as well. 
never had a problem with it until recently up the east coast and now it's reared its head yeah. whenever we have a hard sail like like when we're banging crashing and going fast that's when it happens but talking to the diesel mechanic he said as they get older they can make they can be room space. made space made for that water to get into them we're at about three and a bit thousand hours or probably closer to four thousand so they're not old but they're not new yeah so an anti-siphon break between exhaust elbow and engine is going on it'll give us a piece of mind 100 yeah. percent. so those are the two things battery capacity and uh anti-siphon for the engines oh i just spotted cuba off there in the distance there it is That's pretty cool. I didn't know if we were going to see it before it got dark, but there is the outline of Cuba as we come through the Westwood Channel. Meanwhile, out this side would be Hispaniola, Haiti, but all I see is squalls. So I think I'll keep looking this way. Can you see it, Finn? Sure can. Yeah? How cool is that? Yeah, we're sailing so past Cuba. Really high. It is quite high. Alrighty. So we sailed past the lights of Cuba earlier tonight, which was amazing. We've never set eyes on Cuba before. And uh, we're doing well through the Northwest Passage. So we've got off our starboard, we have Cuba, and off our port, we have Haiti. And we're heading to sort of a waypoint just off the eastern point of Jamaica at the moment. God, you know, 12 to 14 knots true, and we're doing six and a half to seven knots. So just easy, easy. Um, at the moment, and uh, it's beautiful sailing. A wee bit shifty, the wind seems to be sort of bending a wee bit, uh, so you gotta keep on your game so it, there's no accidental jiving. But just had bells up to give us a hand to reset the sails, shown us having a good, well deserved kip, and I'm enjoying the sail at the moment. Time. It's been good, but it's time. Nice work, Pep. What are you up to? Downloading weather for the day. Yep. And it's at this point, just to um, almost date stamp where we are, friends of ours on other boats have Elon Musk's Starling. Starling box. We do not. And we're in like two minds. You know, do we get it? Because it's like better weather forecasting when at sea. But then we actually really embrace not being connected when we are at sea. So it's this trade off. For the moment, uh, we're using the Iridium to download groups uh, from a weather perspective, which is what we've always done. It's slow, like an old school data dial up scenario, but. Um, Bit of sweet, I think, Starling. From a sailing I'm resisting. Yeah. <laughs> I'd... I'm resisting because I actually genuinely don't think if we still had connectivity that we would, it would be the same actually be enjoying the experience. We would probably be checking our Instagram, we'd probably be like trying to upload stuff. We wouldn't be fully engaged in what we're doing and, and in Legos. In Legos, yeah. Legos. And spending time doing things that we otherwise wouldn't. Like you know? reading. Yeah, yeah like well, reading, me, like picking know. up a book. That's exactly. Unique. Bella's always encouraged me. Dad. <laughs> More reading. More reading. More reading. <laughs> More reading. And chess comes out. Yeah. So it is definitely... And I was thinking this morning about Scrabble. So, you know, what if we if we, we were more intentional and, and in, integrated these things in our day to day, then it probably wouldn't be an issue. But when you've got connectivity to the rest of the world, it seems to take a back seat. What if we got it, excuse me, and put like restrictions on it, only used for downloading weather? Do you reckon that'll work? Yes. You wouldn't want to download. You wouldn't be like, YouTube. oh, can we watch a brand new movie? Because all the movies on our hard drive we've seen several times. Oh, yeah, we yeah, exactly. <laughs> you wouldn't be like, can I check my emails? You might be because you've got you time to check, check them. Literally, months. Should be alright. Yeah, I think Archie would cope okay. How do I turn the phone on? <laughs> no, you're not there, bad. Yeah, you he doesn't do. know how to connect it really to the internet. I think he's just learnt that. So do, no, don't, yeah. don't. Just go with, go with what feels right, my man. <laughs> Alright, 
Right. Therein lies the dilemma. You know, I was just staring at this piece of wood. I need to fix it. Yes. That's like See? a stopper for one of these That's seats. one of those things that doesn't get addressed because we're usually connected. <laughs> That's the only reason it doesn't get fixed because we're connected. <laughs> internet is stopping productivity. Stopping, it's stopping you put a small piece of wood back on the bottom of a seat. Yeah. <laughs> the weather is looking as it did before we left. That's always good. More downwind. So good, man. And around downwind is, um, yeah, that's cool. It's been on the lighter side, but I'm not complaining, it's like 10 to 15 directly behind us and we're doing between 6 and 7 and that's, that's kind of the final one. End of day two. Woohoo! This is the third night in a row. It's a tradition, okay? It's a tough tradition, doesn't it? Well, it's on this passage certainly has. But I think there's a reason. Someone wants to make make sure that she gets some wins on the rung. You're a little bit disappointed that last couple of nights dad's got it, huh? It's four nil. <laughs> Oh no! Such a good start, Come on, it must be your night tonight. I've made some pretty average moves. So I'm just taking anything away from how you're playing. Okay. <laughs> I just need to think of the words. Yeah. The longer the, the, longer the passage yeah. goes, the more tired and <laughs> yeah, no, tired Dad will get. Strategy. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that, eh? Clear sky. I'm pretty sure those clouds are over Jamaica. That's the kind so. of general yeah, direction that so. Jamaica would be. Yeah. And um, otherwise, there's not much else happening out here. Just some beautiful downwind sailing. And uh, a boat hitting straight at our stern. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. But he's he's not really. He's I not can really. see him. What's happening down here? Ben yeah. is cooking up some dinner. Pip is whipping up a sourdough for tomorrow. Making a full meal and cow with eyes. Oh, right. A cow with eyes. A cow with eyes. That's important. Yes. But as soon as dinner's ready, it'll be time to pack up the Legos and get eating. Nice work, team. Join us next time as we continue towards Bokis del Toro. We're enjoying a wonderful downwind sail, but unfortunately, at the same time, adding to our repair list. See you next time! No internet, no worries. Got it sorted. We're going so fast. We so, got our own television. <laughs> it's cool, but the safety hat. It's like watching a fire, hey? Mm -hmm. It's mesmerizing. <laughs>